Hey guys, Dario came here. Welcome to another lesson in how to lose belly fat and get six pack abs. And uh, today's lesson we're gonna be talking about probably one of the most important concepts when it comes to losing belly fat. And that's the concept of how many calories do you need to lose fat? Now, um, I was originally gonna put this presentation into a PowerPoint and kind of give you the slides and whatnot, but I thought, you know what, it'd probably be too impersonal and academic. So I wanted to kind of draw it out on the whiteboard here and kind of be with you in the video to guide you through this. So, the title is How Many Calories to Lose Fat. Notice how I didn't put belly fat. Because as we talked about in the previous lessons, when it comes to losing belly fat and really seeing the definition in your abdominals, the goal is really total body fat loss, right? So you really can't say how many calories do I need to lose belly fat because you can't just lose belly fat, as we've mentioned. You have to lose total body fat. And that's really what we're talking about today. Total body fat loss comes down to creating a negative energy balance, as I've shown in this little teeter-totter scale here, which basically means that you want to expend more calories than you're taking in, right? So less calories are coming in, more calories are being burned through exercise. That's pretty much as simple as that. Now, what I wanna do is I wanna equip you with some specific tools that you can use starting today to know exactly where you are and what you need to do to get to your um, ideal caloric intake. So this is something that I do with all my clients, uh, at least when I actually worked with clients in the past. So this is a, a two-step process, right? The first thing we need to determine is what is your basal metabolic rates, right? Your BMR, as I've written down there. What is it? Well, basically your basal metabolic rate is the number of calories your body needs to survive if you were to lay down in bed 24 hours a day. That's pretty much all it needs in terms of survival of the vital organs and tissues in your brain and whatnot. So that's the first step we have to look at. What is your basal metabolic rate? Well, how do we go about determining that? Well, there's a lot of different equations, but the one I really enjoy is one that takes into account your lean body mass, not just your total body weight, and it's actually a very simple equation to use as well. If you can see it here, basically the equation is this. If you want to write it down, I really um, encourage you to do so. It's 370 plus, in brackets, 21.6 times your lean body weight in kilograms. Now we're gonna go through an example to show you how this works. Now the reason this equation is nice is because metabolic rate is heavily dependent on how much muscle mass you have on your body. So other equations that are out there that don't take into consideration your lean body mass are very, very um, inaccurate because if you have 20% body fat versus 25% body fat, that's gonna make a huge difference on your uh, basal metabolic rate. So let's look, at an, let's look at a typical example here. I'm just gonna swing around to this side. All right, so let's assume that you are a female. Uh, if you're a male, then I apologize. So let's assume you're a female who weighs 180 pounds. Right, a typical kind of endomorph, you want to lose obviously quite a bit of fat. And you've determined that your body fat percentage is 25%. Now, how do you go about determining your body fat percentage? We're going to talk about it in just a couple moments, but so bear with me for this. So your, your body fat percentage is 25%. What that means is that 45 pounds of your 180 pounds is fat, right? Basically adipose tissue, fat cells. And that, that means that you have 135 pounds of lean mass. That takes into account your muscles, your, your, uh, uh, your bones, water weights, and stuff, connective tissue, stuff like that. So based on that, now we can plug that number back into our equation. So we look at your BMR in this case, would be 370 plus in brackets, 21.6 times your lean mass, which we just calculated here, which in kilograms, is 61.4. So we take 135, we divide it by 2.2 to convert it back to kilograms, and then we just basically multiply that out. So what we get is a total basal metabolic rate of 1,695 calories. So this is the number of calories you need to take in, at least, sorry, not you, but in this example, that this person needs to take in on a daily basis if they're just to lie in bed just to survive, okay? That's your basal metabolic rate. Now obviously, you know, no one, is, no one is doing that unless they're in a coma. People are more active, we're more active, you're more active. So we have to look at, okay, what is your total daily energy expenditure now? And that's gonna be based on a couple things. We're gonna be looking at activity factors. 
So there's a couple neat little uh, multipliers, if you want to call them that, down here. So this is step two, right? We've, we've done our kind of, we've, we, got, we have our basal metabolic rate. Now we're going to move to step two, which is calculating your total daily energy expenditure. And this takes into account activity factors. So for instance, there's five levels or five activity factors based on your activity level. The first one is for somebody who's sedentary, does not work at all, works at a desk perhaps all day, right? In this case, our equation would be your basal metabolic rate, your BMR, times 1.2. So 1.2 is the activity multiplier or activity factor in this case. This is obviously not, you know, your situation. At the very bottom, the fifth level is extremely active. This is somebody who's training perhaps twice a day, six times a week. This would be more of a professional athlete. In that case, we'd multiply their basal metabolic rate by 1.9. Now I'm gonna assume that most of you, most of you watching this are in this kind of media, this, this middle category, which represents moderately active, which is three to five uh, workouts or exercise sessions a week at a moderate, act, moderate intensity. And that's generally where most people are. So if you're higher than that, that's fine. If, you're, if you can see the activity multipliers here, um, hopefully you can just kind of deduce where you are based on that. But I'll, I'll, I'll spell them out for you in a second. So this middle level, is, the activity multiplier is 1.55. All right, so the first activity multiplier is 1.2, that is 1.375. The middle one we're gonna work with is 1.55. 1.725 is the fourth one, and then 1.9 is the fifth, all right? So these will, obviously, you'll go towards the fifth one if you're more and more active. We're gonna work with 1.55. So it's actually really, really simple now. So I'm gonna swing back over here. And we're gonna work in this quadrant now. So now we have our activity multiplier, right, which is 1.55, we, and we already know our basal metabolic rate based on this example of 1,695 calories. All we have to do now is multiply that by the activity multiplier. So we have our, cal, our, our BMR, right, times 1.55 gives us 26, 2,627 calories, 2,627 calories on a daily basis. So obviously these equations are not 100% accurate. There's going to be some fluctuations, but it gives us a really good idea of where you are and what your caloric needs are. So for this individual, 180 pound female with 25% body fat with a moderately active lifestyle, three to five workouts a week, she needs to be taking in 22,627 calories just to maintain her weight, okay? So now this is, this is the level where we start to get really, it starts to get interesting because this is the basic number of calories, the minimum number of calories you need to maintain your weight. So if she wants to stay at 180 pounds, she has to take in the number of calories. Now obviously the title of this video is how many calories to lose weight, lose fat specifically, right? So our goal is obviously to create a caloric deficit. We go back to our, pen, um, to our teeter-totter example here. We want to be taking in less calories and expending or burning more. So let's, let's, let's cl clarify a couple of things. First of all, starvation does not work. And we're going to talk about that in a second. Um, and there's, and there's, there's guidelines that are recommended for safe weight loss. And the American College of Sports Medicine recommends a caloric deficit of about 15 to 20% on a daily basis. So what I've done here is I've taken, that, I've taken the 15% number because it's actually a pretty easy place to start. So let's say you wanted to lose a couple pounds of fat. And again, we talked about how it's, it's a long-term um, it's a long-term feed, it doesn't happen overnight. It requires hard work and diligent effort, right? So 15% fewer calories on a daily basis based on this caloric intake of 2627 means that we're gonna be taking